The Rich People of Atlanta, part two. From my previous video, this is Herd's Ferry Road with an aerial view. There was a lot of talk. There was a lot of smack talk and these things, these houses, if you paid 400000 you pay too much and all this other stuff. So I thought I would revisit this with an aerial shot to show you just how nice these homes and mansions are. Once again, there are some mansions on this road. I know there's some people who hate. And first of all, before we get into that, I want to say thanks to all of the people who enjoyed these video, the video, who had a lot of positive comments, who were inspired. Love you folks. Thank you very much. And to my haters, you can eat a fat one because here's the thing. Let's address the California thing and the New York thing. Once again, in the very first part of the video, I say these are the rich people of Atlanta, not New York, not California. But for some reason, you mental midgets keep coming in with these comments. Well, I'm about to give you a little education here. I want you to go to the Google machine. And for those of you who don't know, that would be Google, the Google machine. And, um, this house right here you see with all this clear space that that looks like acres and that's a really big house compared to the car but anywho oh yeah and that's a nice pool it looks crystal clear go to the google machine and put in zip code 30327 and you will see that this is one of the wealthiest zip codes in the united states not just Georgia, but Georgia, North Carolina, Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, and there's a few zip codes in Florida that are greater. I think it's one or two. So in the whole South, from D.C. on down, this is one of the richest zip codes. And what does that mean? Well, what it means is there is a huge concentration of people with means. Yes, there are rich people everywhere. It's just not this many in one location. Anywhere else in the South. Maybe two other places. Now, one of the reasons we're going down Hertz Ferry, because there was a lot of talk and there were people like, come on, man. You know, the rich people are at uh, West Paces Ferry. Well, this is part of the West Paces Ferry Collective. Once again, this is Hertz Ferry. It blends into Northside Drive. Like if you were to keep straight across the little crosswalk, you would run into Northside Drive. Now, this is very important because Northside Drive is where a lot of old money is. This is where there are estates and we're going to get into some of that. So I believe and I'm going to do the research, but Northside Drive is older than West Paces based upon some of the things I see. And the similar people lived in both neighborhoods because with West Paces, you can see all of the wealth because you go in West Paces, you see these mansions, you see these big houses, you see these lovely estates. But Northside Drive is very, very different because you will go down Northside Drive and you will not see much. You'll just see some gates and you you will not because <laughs> I went down Northside Drive today uh, and that's why this is part two. Uh, for those of you who are interested, there will be a Christmas decoration special. I'm probably going to get some help because uh, I knew that Northside Drive was going to be difficult because all you see is driveway. So you really can't see anything and getting out and walking on people's private property is not the the best thing and that would be me down there uh found because right you know just a little thing with the drone you got to be real careful with the drone like uh i have to you know, i'm on private property but there's uh nobody there now we are on north side well we're off north side drive 
Um, what I'm trying to show you is one of the estates. Now, these are older homes and it's kind of difficult because Northside Drive is like part of a mountain. So there's a lot of hills and valleys. So it was really hard to get good shots of everything. But one of the things that is so interesting about this neighborhood is the age. Now, right there across the street, that's a mansion on the hill. It's a mansion on the hill. And I had to be very uh, stealthy. I had to be, you know, because essentially what I did was took the camera and I have these um, amount that I can put on my window and that's how I got away with Because I can't just like be driving around with a camera <laughs> walking in people's yards and stuff. That just caused a lot of attention. Now, fortunately, I have a BMW SUV, so it blends into the neighborhood because I'm out here doing this stuff and no one really pays me any attention because I look like I fit. But you, you will see this over and over again. Now, this is the first part of Northside Drive. Uh, once I, well, I'll show you when we get to uh, Mount Perrin because all of this stuff will make sense after I do all of them. Now, you will see many, many homes like this in this area. Homes that are behind gates, homes that are bodaciously big. This is now I've lived in this area. And for those of you who are fighting with me, I live in the neighborhood. You don't. So you're offering your opinion to compare and contrast against my facts. I live here. <laughs> I've lived here for 12 years. I know what's going on in my neighborhood. You know, I just had to get that off my chest because one of the reasons I'm doing this, uh, many of you have heard of the book, The Millionaire Next Door, which talks about how all of these invisible millionaires are very similar to you. They drive Fords. They shop at J.C. Penney's. And like I said, I've lived in this neighborhood 12 years with millionaires. And they don't live like that. They don't. It's just no. It, it, it's it's false, right? And I was just wondering why, the, and why do people like keep saying this? The best way to become wealthy is to save money. Newsflash: If you are not making two or three million dollars a year and saving half a million, it's going to be very hard for you to save your way to wealth. Also, it's going to be very hard for you to invest your way to wealth if you don't have a high income. And I think this is one of the things that people just don't talk about. And from living in the neighborhood for 12 years, many of these people are business owners. They're small business owners. Time and time again, I run into someone that's like, oh, yeah, I live here. We start talking and they own a business like overwhelmingly when I meet someone, they own a business or there's some old money here. There's some people who've inherited. And when I'm slowing this down <clears throat> to show you, because see, they're going to build a mansion here. They're great in the land. I can already tell you what they're going to build there. And over here, people actually buy lots and the house will never be built on it. They create their own buffer zones. I know this is crazy. But this is what they do. And like I said, this whole neighborhood is like this street after street after street. There are no trailer parks. There are no apartments. There are very few townhomes. And this is the con continuity like right here. This is a, a lot that they could build a mansion on. Right. And I believe that these folks and the reason I slowed it down, because like I said, I'm driving at normal speed. I'm trying to be inconspicuous. You know, I'm not trying to cause a lot of attention to myself, but. I believe those people in that mansion bought that lot next door so they could control who lives next to them. And this, I believe, was here first. But once again, and see something else, too. You notice the large mailboxes, right? Business owners. These are business owners. These are small business owners. This is how people afford to live in these kind of houses. A lot of these folks don't have, quote, jobs. 
Uh, and the people who do have jobs, they're like CEOs, VPs. They're making a million, two, three, four million a year. And, you know, they ain't, there's just not that many jobs that pay like that. OK. And once again, this is another estate. And then because uh, once again, I, I'm not trying to like roll up on someone's house and like, hey, do you mind if I take the drone up and film like, no, no. And part of of what I'm gonna do with the drone is it has a feature where it will follow the remote. So I'm gonna take it up to about 150, maybe 200 feet to make sure that I clear all the tree lines and stuff. And I'm gonna have to have a, get an assistant, someone to guide the drone and, and make sure that it's still following us while I drive. Because here on Northside Drive, the way that it's very hilly, the road's very curvy. Uh, if you're trying to look, you're gonna wreck. So that's one of the reasons that I don't even know what I'm getting a video of until I actually edit it and put it out there. And I went out early Sunday morning. This is why you're seeing some stuff that's exposed. And for all of you video and photography pros, tell you what, why don't you get on the plane, come down here and do this? Because this is, are those turkeys in the yard? I think there's some dogs. I don't know. But anyway. Um, I'm just doing this to give people some real practical advice. If you want to live in a house like this, your best option is to start a business. If you want to live in a neighborhood like this, your best option is to start a business. This is why I'm doing this. I live here. There's other black folks. Hotep. And for all you hotel folks who are going to come after me. And I had someone who said this. It's like, yeah, okay, you got some receipts. Why are you showing receipts? Bill Gates shows receipts. Um, what's this? Uh, Grant Cardone shows receipts. Ty Lopez shows receipts. All these folks be showing receipts. Ty Lopez. Now, Grant Cardone has a video here on YouTube of him waiting on the tarmac for his private jet to come in. So why shouldn't I show receipts? You know, uh, essentially... We as a people, and I'm talking to McCullough folks here, McCullough folks, uh, there, there's a there's a civil war going on. There's the progressive blacks. Now, that is party. And there are the non progressive blacks. I don't believe there's ends. And, no, there's progressive blacks and there's non progressive blacks. And the non progressive blacks are trying to hold down the progressive blacks with all of these wives tales and stuff like, well, you know, you start a business. The white man ain't going to buy from you. I have clients in Israel, France. Russia, Japan, uh, China, Europe, all over the place. So that's false. And once again, I, I do understand some of the hate now because I was really shocked. You know, if you're going to say something slick and smart, OK, fine. But there was some substantial hate. And part of it is now this is a little shop where Northside Drive crosses over Mount Perrin. And Mount Perrin is the first rich people of Atlanta. This this is right here. This is Mount Perrin. So I'm busting the U-term. And I'm just trying to show you that once you cross over, because I will do the other side of Northside Drive, because that is going to be crazy. Because uh, that's an older part of Atlanta. And I'm not trying to make these things outrageously long, because I know some of you is like, hey, all of these are just on the street. I didn't go down all these side streets because this video would be like seven hours long. I'm just giving you the highlights, just giving you the game of how these people live and what you need to do to get here. You're not going to get here in Bitcoin. And let's talk about some Bitcoin. 2017, I sold all my Bitcoin and people said, you're crazy. You need to hold on, hold on, hold on, right? And Bitcoin, in my opinion, is based on nothing right now. Uh, the underlying technology of cryptocurrency is real. And I think in 15, 20 years, it's going to be the thing. And if you buy some Bitcoin or altcoins and just hold on to it, and here's something else. Do not be going out to get a loan to buy some Bitcoin. Don't do that. Uh, maybe 5% of your portfolio should be in cryptocurrency if you're going to do that. But some people are like laying out. And like I said, when I bought my cryptocurrency, I I spent like 12 bucks. I had no clue that it was going to be what it was. And I was no financial genius. I was just like, 
I'm an early adapter. I like new technology. It's like, this looks like it could be some. So I'll just buy a few and hold on to them, right? Well, be careful with Bitcoin. I know there's a lot of people telling you to go all in. And if you don't, you'll be sorry. Um, and I'm going to say this too. For all the folks who are buying Bitcoin and you don't have any real money. Because see, if you're buying like, let's say your dollar cost averaging like 300 bucks per month into Bitcoin. So that's 3,600 bucks a year. Now, in 20 years, if Bitcoin's worth 150, um, okay, you made some money. But put this in your hat and let's pop on it. I started this YouTube channel in 2009 and I invested $289. That's all of the money that I've ever put into this channel that was my money. And I did a lot of sweat equity, right? Well, here it is. This channel's made millions of dollars and I've made money from the channel and I've reinvested that money into the business, but I didn't put any more money into it. Now with cryptocurrency, you're going to have to continue to put money in it if you're not generating exponential returns like a business. The stock market, what's the stock market? It's an ability for everybody in America to buy a piece of a business. That's what the stock market is. You're buying pieces of businesses. Hello? Can I get a hello? So start your own business. And one of the reasons that I'm just showing you this is <laughs> we're on Northside Drive again. And this is the driveways. There, there are houses behind there. And once I get my co-pilot and we figure out how to do this, because uh, I don't when I fly the drone, I don't really go on private property unless it's like a hotel or a grocery store parking lot, something like this. Like going on someone's yard or pro that just don't do that. If you're a drone pilot, just don't do it, because a lot of times they're going to say no. Or if someone says yes, then someone's going to come out like no, because people are just scared for some reason. But yeah, this is the first part of Northside Drive. This is where the old money the old 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 money and let me see where we are with this because i put it together because there's going to be some more footage of what's behind some of these long driveways um, there's really nowhere to park unless you're parking on the street or parking in someone's yard and that gets a little dicey so I did find a house that they were building and no one was there. So that's where I took off from with the drone. But right here, all you're seeing all is th this is places that people with money can build. And there are houses back there. See, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, the driveway, some of these driveways are literally half a mile to three fourths of a mile long inside the perimeter, inside the perimeter. And I'm going to do a little bit more research. So, like I said, uh, be sure to subscribe. There's going to be a part. There's going to be a Christmas edition because I'm telling you, this place gets lit. Get it? It gets lit during the holidays. And I'm doing this from a standpoint of where I live and filtering out within maybe seven to eight square miles. That's what it's like on this side of Roswell Road. I may go up into Cobb County near Paper Chase. Uh, that's part of this because I see how they built this now. Uh, Hertz Ferry, Riverside goes into uh, Cobb County. And there's a linkage there of how all of this stuff was set up. And it once again, there's the south side, which is usually poor. And there's the north side, usually where the money is. I, I don't know why it's like that, but it, it's, it seems to be like that in every city, town, state, whatever. But one of the things that you should understand is, and I'm talking to my young folks here. I'm talking to my 16-year-olds, my 17-year-olds, my 18-year-olds. You can do this, okay? It's, but it's not going to happen in a week. It's not going to happen in a month. It's not going to happen in a year. But... Let's say you're 16, you start a business and you, 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 you start your business, have it for 20 years. You're 36. That's 20 years. That's two decades. And you could be right up in here because there are no gatekeepers. There are no barriers. Uh, you could be a woman. You could be a man. You could be handicapped. You could be blind. You could be trans. You could be, you can get this. But the thing is 
what kills most people is their expectations are so uh, concentrated. It's like I should be able to do this in a week. Uh, well, I should be able to do this in a few years. The reality is, and many of these people who live here are older. It took them 20, 30 years to get here. Unless they inherited the property from mom and dad. That's just the reality. And many people don't want to hear that. It's like this, these G.G. Uh, G. Wentworth commercials. Like, I want my money now. I want my cash now. But to my young people, once again, if you see this video. All right. Uh, this, this is where <laughs> I am uh, being very risky because they're building a house here. And. Because uh, there's just one part of Northside Drive, just like literally three miles where you see nothing. But their house is there. They're just like, as we're about to see. Um, and then there's some other things, too. Notice how tall these trees are. These houses have been here a long time. Think about that. All right. So this is one house that's behind one of these long driveways. And for the folks who don't know what acres are, those are acres right there. See? Now, look at the car and look at the size of the pool. Look at the house. And there's another one <laughs> right there. But I was running. There's there was some kind of interference here. So I didn't want to, like, lose the drone or anything. But, yeah, there are houses all up and down the street. But once again, you see these with trees because they've been here for a long time. They've been here. And uh, here's another one. It's you because all of these trees, you just can't see it. But this is one house. That whole complex is one house. Once again, these are mansions. These are mansions. And for uh, people, uh, you know, to my haters, let's let's have a little chit chat. Um, You don't have to hate. You just have to focus. You have to start changing your behaviors. You have to become better than what you were because I understand why you hate me and I understand the mean comments. And once again, I'm taking a drone here because there is one house behind these. Wait for it. 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 Uh-huh. 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 We're I thought that was two gates. Uh, never mind. Uh, I messed up there. But. <laughs> I didn't I didn't actually get that, but there's two gates. That was a private basketball court. And you'll see these folks have tennis courts and stuff. But back to the haters. Um once again, change who you are. Do not sit there and just be mad because someone's doing better than you. I'm 52 years old and I grew up in an era where if someone was better than you, you just had to go. They were better than you, and then you would have to figure out how you could get better. That's called competition. Uh, there are many of you who feel for some reason that you are supposed to be on some serious level without any work, without any accomplishment, just because your mama told you you were cute. It don't work like that. This is the real world. If you want this and many people want this and many people can have this, you're just looking at a 10 to 30 year journey. I'm just keeping it a buck, as they say on these Internet streets. This ain't going to happen when you're in your 20s unless you're a genius. And there's some of you who are geniuses and this will happen. But the reality is you're going to have to put out to get to this level. You're going to have to really be magnificent in what you do. I mean, the reality is for you to excel, you're going to have to start adapting some better behaviors you're going to have to start making some good decisions. First things you should do is get those five checking accounts and start treating your personal life as a business and managing your money correctly and making sure your credit is straight and don't try to live on credit. What you want to do is try to make more money. You need to play these. Well, what I call money games, like if I want to do something, I'll sit down and figure out, like, how can I create a new source of income versus trying to shoehorn that desire into my life? So right below this video, there are some resources 
to help you get your mind correct. There's some resources for you. Even if you're poor, even if you have no money for you to go ahead and change your life, go ahead and begin to do something that is different because you can be poor. Um, in 1999, I started in 1997, I was effectively homeless. I went through a, rot, a serious divorce and it left me living in a boarding house in the West End of Atlanta with crackheads. I was thinking I was somewhat of an accomplished person, but the reality was that I made many, many bad decisions. I thought that I was making good decisions because all my decisions were predicated on taking care of my family, making sure they look good. That actually is a false herring, and we could talk about that more on my other channel, Disruptive Mail. You can go to the first the channel page and you can see where the link is. Because um, one of the things that happened to me in 1999 is I became deprogrammed. I understood that the world didn't work the way that I thought that it did. And due to that deprogramming, I began to look at how do I get what I want in life? And how do I get this is to serve people. The more people that you serve, the more money that you're going to make. This is why a football player will make millions and a school teacher will not. When that football player is on that field on Sunday and he, like Odell Beckham Jr., when he caught, did that one-handed catch, that was a few years ago, we're still talking about it because he inspired millions of people. Whereas that school teacher who's doing a great job, she's inspiring kids, she's teaching kids, but she's not teaching millions. She's teaching a few hundred or a few thousand over the course of her career. So think about it. If you want to make more money, figure out a way how you can serve a bunch of people. So with that, I'll see you guys later. Uh, for the folks who love these videos, there will be more to come. There will be a Christmas special. And for the haters, thank you. I appreciate you because the more you hate, the more money I will make.